Aha! Hi, this is Ronnie from YouTube and we are going to talk today about dietary deficiencies. So I did a live broadcast on the Fruit Fest uh, Facebook page, Dietary Deficiencies, about dietary deficiencies in the raw vegan diet. And I guess I was just trying to get a few points across. It might have ruffled a few feathers or whatever. Um, I guess my main point, when we think about deficiencies connected with a raw vegan diet, we've got to really get, I think, the terminology right. And I'm not sure if we are getting the terminology right, because obviously people being low in particular nutrients um, is maybe different from being deficient in those nutrients, is maybe different in developing uh, a serious problem from being deficient in those nutrients and so on and so forth and uh, I think that we're placing too much focus on, on deficiencies rather than thinking about all the positive benefits of eating the healthiest diet for human beings and that is for me a bit of a, a problem with, with a lot of people that support this lifestyle and, are, and love the lifestyle and do it but they still have a lot of uh, questions or concerns or worries about being deficient in particular sub, um, particular nutrients and they might supplement and often I think it is a reason that people go back to a standard diet or a different diet or maybe a non-vegan diet because they perceive that they do have these deficiencies in their diet or the diet isn't complete or what have you but some of these things are kind of weird I mean, I can understand when people talk about certain nutrients, but not with others. But anyway, let's get back to total basics. Human beings require food on a daily basis to make up for the fact that we obviously run into a calorie deficit, which means that we run into an energy deficit. We spend more energy than we um, can create without food uh, through just breathing or sunlight, regardless of what the Brethanians say. We need more than just sunlight and water and fresh air and sleep. We need more than that. So we require um, basically sugar is one of the main nutrients that we require. Let's just, rec let's just repeat that. Sugar is one of the main nutrients we require. Fortunately, our body can make sugar to some degree, um, but eventually we will run out of the building blocks of sugar so we have to consume food on a daily basis to get the sugar that we require and uh, that's not the same as saying processed sugar but we require carbohydrate we need something to turn into the sugar that we feed all of our cells that, um, that aid in the respiration process or are part of the respiration process so we need to be taking in calories on a daily basis and there's, let's say the average is about 2,000 calories, it's probably a bit more than that, but let's say as a round number, 2,000 calories of food is what's required. So number one thing that we require to not go into a deficiency of uh, nutritional deficiency technically would be calories. We need to eat enough. Eventually, if we don't eat enough calories, we will suffer and lose weight which isn't a bad thing on the sh if, if we have weight to lose, obviously. But if we keep going, we're going to fall apart, right? We're going to lose too much weight. We're going to have to start eating into our muscle tissue and eventually eat into the heart tissue. And at that point, when our heart can't function anymore, we're going to pass away, or we might pass away before that. So clearly, before anything, we require fuel, the best fuel that we... the fuel that we are, are most... Um, efficient with is carbohydrates, food that are food that are carbohydrates, hydrated carbons, and those foods come to us um, in the best source in a raw source, uncooked, unprocessed, in the form of fruit and vegetables. But fruit being the one that we can mainly live off, and this really matches up with our anatomy or design. Um, the history of our species, the lineage of other animals, the classification that we were then, primate, anthropoid primate, all the similar animals are fruit eaters. 
So we require enough fruit on a daily basis. But outside of that, we require ma micronutrients. Um, just to say, I've, gl I've glossed over protein and fat. Protein and fat are so in insignificant, it's not even worth worrying about. If you're eating fruit, you're getting protein and fat. That's the end of that story. <laughs> That's basically the end of that debate. Um, if you're eating enough calories of whole foods, essentially you're getting enough protein and fat. It's, it's almost impossible, impossible. It's almost impossible to eat too little protein or fat. No one in society has a problem with too little fat. Everyone's eating too much fat. No one has a problem with too little protein. Everyone's eating too much protein. And um, I, I, I guess I shouldn't just leave it there. Uh, the fats that we require, omega-3, omega-6, they're in all fruits and vegetables. You can check that out if you like, but they are in all fruits and vegetables. The proteins that we require are, we require human protein, but we don't eat humans to get human protein. We make it. So we make our own protein out of amino acids. Amino acids are uh, plentiful and abundant in all foods and uh, especially in fruits and in vegetables, but especially in fruits. So I, I know there's an idea that there's not enough protein in fruits, um, but the fruit eating animals don't seem to be worried about it. The ones that we're most like, the ones that eat 97, 99% of their calories from fruit, that have the exact same digestive system as us, they don't seem to be too worried about getting enough protein from fruit. So we get amino acids, and because we are eating a raw food, we're not damaging the amino acids, and therefore we create enough protein. There's never been a case of protein deficiency ever found in the world. Protein deficiency doesn't exist, it never has existed, it never has happened, and um, people think the protein is so important because of the industries that sell high protein products that wanted people to believe that it was an especially important part of your diet. And it isn't. So that's that dealt with. And uh, omega-3 and omega-6 are in all fruits and vegetables. So that's that dealt with. And uh, <laughs> then we go on to the micronutrients, which people always get so interested in about. And no one's talking about the, the flavonoids and all these other things. We're talking about all the things that are only in fruits and vegetables and all the antioxidants. We're talking about the um, essential nutrients, the ones that we require to get from food that we can't create ourselves. Um, so a lot of people are interested in criticizing the vegan diet. They're interested in non-essential nutrients like fat-soluble nutrients like vitamin A and vitamin D. And uh, vitamin A is not a nutrient that we have to consume. Uh, it's not an essential nutrient because we create it from beta-carotene, so it's not seen as an essential nutrient. Vitamin D is not an essential dietary nutrient because we get it from, the, we get it from sunlight. And I, get, I guess, I get it that people are going to argue about how much sunlight do you need and everything else, but there's ways of getting vitamin D, um, whether from sunlight, or whether from sun tanning beds, or supplementation, or, or whatever. So. Vitamin D isn't, isn't really a big issue. We come to the other micronutrients, vitamins, minerals, and so on. It's interesting first to look into the history of dietary deficiency. Where does this come from? Well, for millions of years or thousands of years, people just ate what they ate and ate what their parents told them to eat. And uh, we didn't really know any different. And people got sick sometimes and they didn't sometimes. We didn't really understand any of these things. We didn't understand anything in a, in a major way. We had some kind of folk medicines probably and folk remedies and witch doctors and all sorts but we didn't really understand what we were doing and people started to get oofed. We, we started to understand things a little bit more um, within the last few hundred years and we started to identify different diseases being caused or, or being cured by diet by changing diet and not because of demons and viruses and all the other things that people might have blamed for causing these diseases. So if we look at the majority of the major dietary deficiency diseases that have affected humanity, we go down the list. Scurvy, 
which no one understood what it was, and then eventually they worked out it was a vitamin C deficiency, they eventually worked out all that. Um, and they worked all that out in response to the disease happening. That's where all that science comes from. Um, vitamin C uh, doesn't happen anymore. No one gets vitamin C deficiency. It's, it's almost impossible to get now. And it only really happened back then to people who were going on ships and were away from fresh food uh, because if you lived on land, you're going to eat some vegetables sometime. You're not going to completely avoid them. You're going to eat some um, uh, uh, fruits sometime. And a lot of people are probably saved from scurvy by the fact that potatoes are, you know, pretty good level of vitamin C and there's potato in so many junk foods. So people probably get <laughs> saved from scurvy from that. Uh, but not out, out in the ships. But skirt, but it's not really a big deal because it doesn't happen to anyone. Um, one of the deficiencies that would be cured by fruit, not caused by a fruit diet, but cured by fruit. Let's look at. Um, I can't. I'm not sure which one around, but beri beri and pellagra were other deficiency diseases that affected populations of people. One was a deficiency in B1. One was a de deficiency in B3. Both of these would be cured by eating fruit. Um, they were caused by eating cooked carbohydrates. For all the people that love your cooked food, the deficiency diseases have always occurred when people ate exclusively or, or almost entirely exclusively cooked carbohydrate sources of their diet. So if you think that cooked food isn't a problem, well, you can just look to some of these people that have had uh, major deficiency diseases. When they when they didn't when they didn't have access to fresh uh, produce as well, so both of those would be cured by eating fruit. So we're already three of the major deficiency diseases would all be cured by eating fruit. We have um, I'll tell you one that I don't know a lot about, which is night blindness, vitamin A deficiency. Um, but vitamin A deficiency is a deficiency in beta carotene. So I'm not sure, I need to really look into that more. But we don't get vitamin A deficiency in the developed world. I've never met any raw vegan with it, but you know, that doesn't mean there's not one that hasn't had it, but I've never seen anyone that had it. I've never heard anyone mention it because we eat so much beta carotene in our diet, so much in fruits and vegetables. There's just, you're just not gonna get vitamin A deficient. Um, it's likely, once again, there's more issues involved in that, probably insufficient calories, people not eating enough, people having um, poor diets in general in developing worlds, in developing world. Um, so probably would be cured by eating more fruit if they could get enough. Um, and then we go into rickets, vitamin D deficiency, um, which isn't obviously wouldn't be cured by fruit, but um, would be cured by sunlight. And the only rickets isn't really something that happens anymore either. It was something that happened when people were not getting any sunlight, so they were indoors all the time. They were in factories, uh, children in particular in factories, and weren't getting any access to the sunlight. And that's what happened. Doesn't happen anymore. Um, iodine. Uh, people who had iodine deficiency maybe would have a goiter and then iodine was added to the salt. It doesn't happen anymore and fruits and vegetables have iodine so they probably weren't eating any fruit either. Maybe it would have been cured by eating fruit. I can't say that exactly but there is iodine in fruits and vegetables. Um, a lot of people make the point that that's fine as long as there's enough iodine in the soil and in the fruit and all that stuff. Well. I personally don't buy into the whole conspiracy theory that, you know, all the farmers in the world are trying to grow fruit that doesn't have minerals in them. I, I don't really understand why a farmer would risk, like, losing his entire crop. Um, but some people like to believe that that's the way the world is. There's very scant scientific information on fruit and vegetables not having nutrition in it or not as much as it used to, and, and a lot of it's kind of mis, misguided. It's certainly not It's certainly not something that has been totally adopted as the mainstream. The idea that fruit and vegetables are um, 
worse now than they ever have been is a very prevalent idea. It's a very convenient idea for those that sell supplements. And that's where it's come from, pretty much, as far as I can see. So I don't worry about that, that kind of thing. Have a look at the nutrition facts and different fruits and vegetables, this iodine there. Eat enough fruit. Uh, what else? Let's see. Um, those are the major ones I can think of right now. Oh, B12. So B12 is a deficiency. It's a very uncommon deficiency. Um, and, uh, you know, vegans know enough about that and tend to supplement. I, I don't supplement, but that's just my own journey. You know, I'm not telling other people to do it. Um, I've known other people that haven't. I've known other people that haven't and they've had got problems with it. And I'm people that haven't and didn't get problems with it, and you know, who knows exactly. Uh, but definitely, the science tends to suggest that vegans have lower levels of B12, and those levels of B12 are in the, the standard for being a low, and therefore, you may wish to supplement and you may wish to do blood tests, speak to a doctor or someone that you think is qualified to make that decision for you. And um, it's not a big issue. It's not a big problem. There's, def there's definitely ways to supplement B12 if that's what you want. It's not something that's going to take hold of you within the first weeks of going vegan. Um, it could be something that in 20 years' time causes <laughs> is an issue. It's not something that is going to attack you overnight. Uh, and there's all sorts of stuff about the B vitamins being affected by stress. And, and there's, so there's a lot of stuff to it. Would it be solved by eating a fruit diet? It could be if, if your diet is affecting your gut and your ability to absorb. Um, I know that Doug Graham has talked about people who were low with B12 who went to fast and after a fast their B12 was back to normal. Which is weird because they've not taken anything in. They've not eaten anything but their B12 goes back to normal. So that's kind of that's kind of interesting but it's just an anecdote, you know, we don't want to place too much weight on that. But um, definitely the, the mainstream science, the vegan doctors will suggest that the science says that vegans tend to be lower in B12 and in the low range. Whether that's the same as deficient, deficiency, deficiency disease, you know, you have to go quite far down the road there to get to the point where you've not taken any action and you're getting that sick the, the way that people with serious B12 issues have. So that was my point really was, why are people worrying so much? Almost all of the major dietary deficiency diseases that have affected humanity are cured by eating fruit. <laughs> They're literally cured by eating fruit. Um, maybe cured's the wrong word, just like you don't get problems if you, you as many problems if you eat your natural diet. This is probably a really boring video for a lot of you because maybe you want more drama Maybe you want me to be selling you a supplement. Maybe you'd love to be the different, the, the, the different person with the, with the deficiency and you need to eat fish or something. Maybe you want to be that person. Um, but here's some things that you won't get deficiency in and that's saturated fat and cholesterol. And that's something that is unbelievable that people seem to be saying that um, saturated fat and cholesterol are something that we need to consume or that we can be low in or, or whatever. Saturated fat is something that we make once again. And uh, all animals, I, th I think all animals make it for themselves. And uh, cholesterol is something we make as well. We don't need to take it. Um, and then there's other things like DHA and stuff. And there's been a video from Joel Furman talking about vegans should be taking DHA or eating sea algae or something. Um, once again, it's not a required nutrient, it's one that we make, one that we synthesize ourselves, so it's not something I'm particularly worried about. But there is a, there's always going to be a lot of worries about deficiency. Um, what I would say to you if you're beginning in this diet and lifestyle is it's not something for you to be too concerned about. Um, but you will see a lot of people that will try to make you concerned about it. And you will see a lot of companies that are trying to, and, and a lot of them, you know, I don't see this as an evil thing, you know. 
So if a company is selling supplements, I think that most of the time they're genuinely selling, they genuinely think that there's something good about their supplements. There's not a lot of science to back any of that up. There's not any research really to back up supplements, supplement companies. It's, it's a, it, if you start to go into the world of business and marketing and research that world and stuff, one of the easiest and simplest things for people to do is to start a supplement company. Um, start a supplement brand and they're just using the same rubbish as everyone else. It's the same powders and the same stuff, exact same stuff. It's called white label products and they just put their own label on it and they say that this is the best thing and then they sell it and there's a big margin on it and everything so they make money but um, it's and you know things like protein powders and weight gain things, weight loss products and these are really good selling things but they don't really help people get to a, a good standard of health so it's not really something I particularly want to focus on I don't think you should focus on it I think you should focus on trying to change your diet and uh, try and get out the, the bad foods from your diet improve your lifestyle improve your your mindset just go on it's a, it's a long journey unfortunately um, getting healthier but you should see the biggest impact through eliminating the bad foods from your diet and the worst foods, the disease causing foods are animal products. The disease causing foods. The only diet that's ever been shown to uh, reverse heart disease in a clinical study was a plant based diet where they were taken off of meat, dairy, oil and other high sources of fat. So this is a diet we want to go towards to go towards a healthier life. and. That's the thing we should focus on, not deficiencies, not supplements, because these things aren't, are distractions, complete distractions. If you don't believe me, you know, I don't know what to, I don't know what to say. Um, so anyway, thank you for watching the video. I hope this gets out. Sometimes my videos actually don't upload. I make a video and I try to upload it and it disappears or whatever. Um, if you want a recipe book and a meal plan about this lifestyle, go to fruitfest.co.uk and you can get one there. If you would like hmm, to come to the festival, fruitfest.co.uk, you can use my code RONSTER, R-O-N-S-T-E-R, gives you 10% off if you want to come. Um, we have spaces left. We're about to do our, a big advertising campaign to fill out the whole thing. Uh, the last remaining beds and spaces so look out for that uh, or if you want to get your room before we do that because unfortunately we can't hold a room for you and we can't you know do all that kind of stuff um, people have come to me they said can you do this can you do that can you know what we've we're only looking for a small amount of people and and we don't have a big team so we're just offering what we're offering if it's for you that's great if not we're going to get enough people, so if it's not for you, that's fine. Um, we'll see you in another video. Thank you for watching.